All right, guys, we got a special guest in the house this morning to talk to us about media and also 2024 politics, the former host of Hardball with Chris Matthews, the one and only Chris Matthews. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. I'm here. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> um, so let's start with a little bit of uh, Biden administration stuff. What uh, do you give him as a grade on policy? Well, and what do you give him as a grade well, on Well, I mean, I'm a political expert. That's yes. what I'm at. That's yeah. what I'm good at. And I, uh, I think uh, he's going to face a close election next year. Uh, I think 2024 is going to even. So I'd say uh, he should be able to carry the usual Democratic states and lose the usual Republican states and will decide the election probably in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Georgia. Although I think Georgia is getting very tough for, for Trump right now. I think. Hmm. It looks like that governor is a pretty good, tough, strong guy, Got Kemp. It. So you think it'll come down to the traditional I, I think, states. look, the economy is, the numbers are really interesting. You know, I never thought of unemployment this low. Huh. It's very low, but there's also the inflation threat. And, it, and I don't think inflation goes away when they go from, uh, say, 9% down to something lower. I think people still feel it. Yes, and they when they go, And, they, and they, uh, a guy complained the other day about Philly, you know, Philly cheese, che what do you call it? The, 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 the cheese steak. Che it was the cheese, oh. it was the cheese itself. Oh, he was okay. just complaining about Philly. Uh, and uh, and I I think people don't like prices. They don't like the gas. Right. Yeah. And well, if you should. if you're a working guy or working woman, you have to travel 50 miles to go to work. You don't live, live nearby in some elite neighborhood. You got to travel. That means gas every day. That's a tax. It's a tax. Yeah. And and you don't get you don't get anything out of it. You don't get any extra speed out of it. That's you, right. You, you just, just pay, pay a lot more, more for gas. Thing. And and I think that's real. So I think inflation is going to be if if Trump does well, meaning he, if he wins. Uh, despite all the legal pro challenges he faces, if he wins, it'll be because of inflation. Hmm. And uh, unemployment is, is lower, but that only affects the unemployed or the, or the employed. I mean, that's only a percentage. It's, it's very good to get it low because it gets marginal people to work. I think one thing, really good thing about the economy today is the people that normally wouldn't get a job are working because they've, they've, they've gotten brought onto the wor workforce by, by salaries. So, so what do you think about, from a political perspective, the idea of leaning into this label Bidenomics, fusing his name with an economy that the overwhelming majority of people say is not working for them? Well, it, you know, I, I think that he's done some things that Trump hasn't done. Don, uh, Donald Trump uh, came into office saying he was going to do infrastructure and build up the economy, build up the, the, uh, the, uh, the roads, highways, Bridges, everything, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then new stuff. He didn't do it. Why didn't he do it? That's my big question. Why didn't mm. Trump do the every even demagogues like Huey Long and Hitler and people like that? They all build stuff. Mm -hmm. Building is what demagogues do. It's it's one way to reach the people. Why didn't he do it? So if he was so bad, and no, Biden no, no, it's not so, so bad. It's but, just that Biden has done this, and he sure. hasn't. But if he's done better on these areas, why are they tied? And then you also have obviously all the indictments. I mean, this man may be facing prison time by the time the election comes around. Why is it a jump ball? Isn't that a you know show some weakness on the Democratic? Yeah, there's side. I think it is charisma. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Biden may suffer from that. I don't think he has the charm that Biden that uh, Barack Obama had or Reagan had. I think uh, I'm writing about that now. I mean, who's good on television? Let's be blunt. Who's good on television? In politics, that matters. Trump is good on television. When he says something, he doesn't reconsider his words. He says it once. He doesn't say, I mean it, folks. Literally, folks. He just said it. Yeah. And, and when Trump speaks, it's loud. And I think that's powerful stuff. And Reagan could do it. Uh, Barack Obama could do it. Jack Kennedy could do it. Roosevelt could do it on the radio, mm -hmm. but Biden does have that problem. He's he's older too. He's eighty. Yeah. Uh, his problem is uh, the, the 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 gravitas doesn't come through. Hmm. I think that's part of it. A lot of this is cosmetic. I and mean, let's face it, a lot of politics is how sure. how you look, what do you sound like, uh, are you convincing, uh, and even if if the policies are good. He's got to go out and sell them. What about Kamala Harris? Do you think she's a good heir apparent for the Democratic Party? Uh, I think she'd have a hard time winning a general election mm -hmm. on her own. Why did, that? did he make a mistake? By because I, I don't think that she has gone out and uh, and talked to the American people. You know, when you're running for office, you have to make yourself likable. You have to make yourself likable. And this guy, De DeSantis, isn't able to do that. He mm -hmm. doesn't know how to do small talk. He can't talk to kids. He can't talk to regular people. <laughs> a lot of people have had this problem. I mean, yeah. uh, John Kerry had this problem. Walter Mondale had this problem. A lot of people have come off as too official. Right. They don't know how to talk to regular people. W could do it 
like a bandit. He may have been, he, he took us into the wrong war, but he knew how to talk to regular people. And that talent uh, hasn't come from the Florida governor. And, uh, and Kamala, for some reason, Kamala thinks she's a, she comes off as a prosecutor. Hmm. Like she's talking about people who disagree with her on abortion rights. Well, they're not wrong. I mean, they may be wrong in your thinking. They may, you may disagree with them, but they're not evil, you know? And, and that's not, and, and portraying it, always being on the attack doesn't make you popular. Hmm. Now make the list of all the popular prosecutors there are. I mean, <laughs> I mean they're just not. And, right. and, and I think you have to tell stories. If I were in her corner, and I used to do this for a living, I'd tell her, tell stories about growing up with a tiger mother, hmm. an Indian American mother. That must've been really tough. You had to have all A's. You know what it's like. Yeah, you, it's you tough. You can imagine what it's like. You know, and yeah. she, tell her what is what, what that's like. What's it like having a Jamaican father? What's that? What, the, what is that mixture of two cultures? What was that like? Mm. Tell us yeah. something mm. that make that brings you into your life. Yeah. And everybody Although, everybody tells the narrative. Bill Clinton was the best. The best. In the he world. was good. Sure. Yeah. And, and 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 you have to tell your story so people say, you know what. That's not quite my story, but you know, I think it's interesting. I, yeah. wanna, I wanna follow that person. Yeah. And she doesn't do that. And me, I don't understand. I don't understand a politician who doesn't try to be liked. Mm. And I, I think uh, uh, J Jack Kennedy, people used to say, I've written a lot of books about him, that he, uh, that everybody thought he liked them. Mm. That's a talent, that people thought that he liked them. Well, well the, does that come across with her, do you think? No. Uh, the American people don't think so. It doesn't really matter what I <laughs> yeah, think. The yeah. American people don't but seem she, to think the, so. You know, some people come off as, uh, uh, Michelle Obama's very popular, but she doesn't have that, she doesn't have that approving voice either. It's not, it's not common. Hillary didn't have it. It's, mm -hmm. it's not getting people to do what you want them to do. It's getting them to like you first, and then they might do what you want them to do. But isn't you have to convince more... people. By the way, politics is simple. You have to like the person. Yeah, yeah. sure. It's so simple. I mean, that's the first step. But you know, to go back to, to and the trust Biden, them, and trust them. Yeah, okay. and to go to go back to the Biden critique, isn't there more though than just you know the messaging or the the cosmetic or his inability to convey is? gravitas? Well, I'm, we're asking you. <laughs> I'm asking yeah. you. Um, <laughs> well, it is good luck. Yeah, you, why do you have to repeat yourself? When you look at the numbers, are, though, sure. when you look at the numbers in terms of how people are doing economically, you do have this mixed picture. I mean, the White House can rightly point to low unemployment rate, as you did. But when you look at the percentage of people who are food insecure or struggling to pay their bills, um, a trillion dollars in debt, credit card debt, we just hit that milestone yeah. as a nation. So there is real economic. Well, there's people living at the there. edge where they, they, they can't raise 300 bucks if they need to. You've seen these studies. Yes. Exactly. You, you can't raise 300 bucks, right? So now. isn't there more to the, the problems for Biden and why he's tied with Trump? Well, then there's, then there's always the going to be problems. Hmm. But you've just established as the American condition. Yeah. It's always going to be like this. Well, but that's, very, that's very nihilistic, no, though. No, because we not saw, nihilistic. I'll but, tell you, but, Ronald Reagan got reelected in a morning in America. What's unemployment rate? What do you think his unemployment rate was? I don't know. Seven. So, I mean, they, you can't just quantify and yeah, say, Yeah, but it's oh, not they, just about where people are. It's where they okay, feel they're going. Okay. And so during the pandemic, for example, you know, there were a lot of problems. There was a lot of pain. But you also had a child tax credit that was put in place that genuinely reduced child po poverty. Mm -hmm. You actually had homelessness significantly reduced okay. because you had eviction moratoriums, you had I expanded access to health care, and you had actually suicides went down. Why is so Trump, possible, why is Trump, on, why is Trump on, running on, even in, in Michigan? Hold on, hold on. So it is possible to improve the material condition of Americans. We've seen it throughout American history. We saw it just now in the pandemic when right, the government okay. wants to deliver. So to say, to throw up your hands and say, well, this is just the American condition. Two billion dollars. I don't think that we're that's running, accurate. A, we're running two trillion dollars in debt in full employment, which is basically full mm -hmm. employment. You can't have more expansive economic policies than that. You can't. You blow the, you blow the whole thing. You did, you and it worked very well for people. Where? It worked well for lots of people who had more money in their bank account. And where childhood poverty was much lower. Well, you know, so when, in when was of, this? When was this? During, during the, the pandemic. pandemic. And then you also had, you know, well, during, during the, let's talk about the FDR era. I mean, we had a new deal right. that, you know, okay. built out the American middle class. Yeah, this sure. is the era you were growing okay. up in. I know where you're right? coming from. Like, I, lower I, inequality. I, I so these things are possible. You can't just say, oh, well, well this is just how it is. Spend more money. Mm. Yeah. Spend more money. And tax the rich. Oh, okay. How, how are you going to do that? You're going to tax the rich. I how mean, do you, how do you do that? The wealthiest among us. Who Trump runs the, who, Trump who runs, gave them, who runs the Trump U.S. Congress? Trump gave them a gigantic Who runs the U.S. Congress? Cut. The wealthy, but isn't that the part of the problem? So what's your argument? My argument is, is the wealthy shouldn't be wealthy, 
and the Democrats should be running the Congress. Well, I no, guess what's your response, though? My I mean, argument are you just saying is, this is the American condition. We can't do anything more. Like right. this, this is stasis. We well, should all I can tell you is we're running. We're running at something that's very close to rate more inflation. Uh -huh. Very close. So what do you do? You bring up you bring up prices. If it, it look, demand pull. The more money you spend, the more prices go up. Right? Do we agree on that? Yeah. No, I actually don't fully agree on that because part of what we saw coming out of the pandemic, you know, the the argument was, oh, it's just because of all the big government spending, because God forbid we give working class people a little bit of money in their pockets. At the same time, increasingly, we've seen a lot of the price increases were from corporations who decided okay. they could price gouge and okay. use the okay. excuse of inflation to mm. lift prices significantly. Okay. Now, that was seen as a fringe theory at the time when it was first floated, like just a bunch of lefty weirdos that think this. We now have increasing evidence that that was a big part of it. We also had, coming out of the pandemic, huge supply chain disruptions that were a real problem, and also the Ukraine war contributed to that significantly. So to just say, oh, they spent money and that's what happened, I think that's a very simplistic understanding of what was going okay. on. Well. All right, well. Uh, <laughs> Disagree? Yeah. I, I, I argue that uh, the more gov government spending, whether government or from the private sector or investment or consumer spending, all that spending drives up prices. All that drives up prices. So you think we need to spend less? If you want to have less, less inflation. Okay. Um, so we sp talked here about inflation. I want to ask you about the media. I grew up kind of watching you on, on t television. This show, uh, kind of our popularity and the existence of a lot of the internet has kind of been in reaction to cable news of which you were a product of for decades. Why do you think that trust in media right now is so low? Too many uh, voices. Uh, too, too many. many? Too many. Oh, different voices. Uh, you can watch Fox and you can watch MSNBC or CNN and you can watch different stories. So you just think optionality is what has reduced trust? Trust is the problem of all media uh -huh. because you have to give the whole picture like you have to talk inflation you have yeah. to talk prices you have to put it all together right and, and you're trying to run an american economy that's healthy and uh the, for example if you talk about hunter why not talk about jared sure well we, we, we do that, that. no 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 yeah. just a minute yeah that, yeah. That, yeah who 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 else does that uh not very many no anybody right anybody right so nobody talks about the holistic situation of relatives and how they might be exploiting the situation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's a problem. We agree. Because everybody who's watching, well, the Wii U is right yeah. here, okay? Yeah. Okay, that's limited. Right. So who else is doing that? Well, who I mean, else is doing uh, the whole picture when they talk about things like, who's talking good. about inflation and the problems of the poor and everything else and homelessness and putting it all together and you're right. talking this one point of view. Putting it all together, what happens to the average person, the middle class family that has to pay, pay bills? When prices go up, they gotta pay. When you're retired, you don't have any income coming in. That's already there, it's fixed. Uh -huh. These are realities. You cannot hurt one group and say I'm helping the other because when you're president, you have to put it all together. In the media, I do think that uh, if you look at who watches MSNBC and who watches M CNN, and, uh, and CNN ex had experimented with Chris Licht with going independent or rather going nonpartisan, it's a very difficult time to go nonpartisan. Though, yeah. Because you have to say, uh, well, I don't know whether Trump won the election in 2020. Okay. Well, yeah, if you want to say that, I think you're an idiot, but that's all right. Uh -huh. You say that and you're saying, I'm not going to deal with factual news. I'm not going to go with which states voted. Right. I'm not going with how the electorates were counted, honestly. I'm not going to, I'm going to just say, well, they're all the same. No, they're not all the same. And right. I think well, that- You did a lot of this at MSNBC, what too. What did I do with the finger well, pointing? Well, I'm no, just what, being No, honest. what did I do? Uh, what did I do here? Well, I- uh, What did I do? I, I saw you do that a lot no, of No, I never years. did. I did tell uh, me what. What did so, I do? I mean, well, while you were in the chair at MSNBC, uh, specifically during the Trump years, I mean, you're talking about how Fox, every criti criticism you just gave, I mean, we're also talking about, I watched on your network, Russiagate coverage about Trump was an asset from 1987, about right. selective coverage of all of this. I mean, do you still feel good about that coverage? Like, because you're, well, you're talking that, about that, that is a problem. The problem oh. was that we had a lot of points where there was would look like collusion with okay. the Russians showing up all the time, mm -hmm. Russians showing up at, at conventions. What are they doing at conventions? Showing up in meetings with, with Trump. All this kind of, the, all those issues together created uh, the situation that looked like it was all connected and that never was connected. Uh -huh. That's a fact. Okay. Yeah. And so do you have any regrets about the coverage during that time or, you know? I think, think whenever you, you whenever you're going to, you're following a story as it develops and you look at it developing and developing and developing and all these, these points seem to hit. 
And all sure. the connections with Russia again and again and again. And we, we never got to the end of the story. Yeah, but as a journalist, you can't just float things that are wild, like, oh, maybe you was a... No, no, it's not floating things. Every I'm fact saying, we dealt I'm, with, I'm every, fact we dealt, every fact we dealt with was a fact. But we watched, you know, segments about, hey, maybe it was a Russian asset since 1987. Hey, maybe these P tapes, well, who, who which are that? unverified. That was on Chase Chris, was on Chris on Hayes' show. Who? Jonathan Chait said that on Chris Hayes' show. On Chris show Hayes' on show. See. You know, a lot of veracity given yeah. to the alleged P tape, et cetera. You don't think the network got out beyond what the facts suggested? I think I think that we did what we had with what we had and we didn't mm. have enough. Okay. Gotcha. And you didn't have enough. I guess I'm curious through MSNBC, now that you're on uh, you're outside, you're independent. With your reflections of what went wrong, you know, you start in the 1990s on cable television, the country was a lot more united. Things start to go downhill. You've said here it's optionality. I'm just, don't I you think- say, the, I didn't say- Well, you said, you said that one of the no, reasons I said, that I said, said, no, 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 You know what I'm talking about. People talking right. to their audience, uh, uh, confirming right. what mm. they, the audience already- But believed. don't you think that's what MSNBC did? I mean, that's effectively- well, You're asking the, me about yeah. MSNBC, ask okay. me about me. Okay, I'll ask you. I mean, you were a fixture on that network for decades. I was a, you you yeah. use these terms. Yeah. I was a fixture, I was yeah. a product of, I don't think these are causalities. I'm not a, fu a function of, of, no, of, you're, of you're MSNBC. you're your own individual. Sure. I'm who I yeah. am, and, and I've always been who I am. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I may disagree with other people on the, on the same network. Mm. I don't know what you're talking about, this we and us and all this thing. Let me, let me ask a little bit specifically about the 2020 and 2016 too Democratic primary way too coverage, because I'm curious about how this went down. You know, this was after I'd been let go from the network, so I don't have any insight into this era. And you would think that MSNBC being this liberal, progressive network overwhelmingly, and you certainly had your own point of view, that they might at least be a little bit Bernie curious, maybe a little bit, you know, inclined towards Bernie Sanders. You, know, you had this overwhelming Bernie Sanders. Bernie who, who, who would be for Bernie Sanders? Well, I'm saying well, who was? That's what I'm saying is that there. Well, you are. That means you are. That do you think other people should be for Bernie Sanders? Well, I'm asking no, why. You're, hold you're, on, hold on, Chris. Hold on. Let me get to a question. No, okay? you're, no because no, there's me, an implicit the answer in the question. No, but let me. I haven't even gotten <laughs> to a, a question. That's a typical question. This is a cable Chris, news network. Chris, where you're hold answering on, the hold question on, with your answer with your question. You had instead of, you know, maybe a variety of opinions or whatever, you had an overwhelming, every single host just completely opposed it, completely contemptible of the movement or uh, at times gripped by like sheer terror that he might well, win. Well, give me some examples. Was that, but hold on, hold on. I'm give me some examples. Question. Okay, well. Uh, give me names. Did, you did float that you might be rounded up and executed in Central Park if he won. So you also no, made I, have, a, I didn't like Bernie Sanders. Look, I said Bernie Sanders. I made it very clear. I, yes. I, never, I never said Anything about Hitler. But okay. what, what I'm- I know, I never said anything about Hitler. Okay, there was, a, I believe, a Nazi comparison. No, that no, made, I wasn't. No, did, no, 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 you, you have float, to answer. I didn't float it. You that people you might be rounded up straight. in- But this is true. You you might be rounded up in Central Park and execute if he was president. Okay, so no, as, one, as, one no, example, no. as one example, but you have to say the overall tenor, tenor of the coverage of the network was very no. negative. Was that individuals making choices? Of was that like was. a voice coming down from the network? Was that a problem of group it was thing? Indiv individuals. It was all individuals. So Absolutely. at your time in the Who network. Who would have talked to me? Your boss. Who would have talked? I know, we have lots wondering. of friends in this yeah. town. Yeah. You're certainly in touch with the network executives who want to have, you know, look, be I, good look, with I the never, next I never got a point of view taught, told to me from anybody in the executive role. So it's just happenstance that every single person at the network hated well, this well, one well, particular I don't think, I, I don't think the, the hate is the right word. Huh. Looks like it from the outside. People can speak to their, their own view at the time. You know, I thought at the time, uh, just to put this back in where I'm factual and, uh, and accountable, I thought when Bernie was headed toward winning in New Hampshire mm -hmm. and winning in Nevada big time, yeah. and I couldn't see even, even results coming in from the others, the moderates from Biden and those, right. and I got, I got concerned that they've disappeared, that they weren't even there, because we, in the afternoon, in Nevada, we didn't have any numbers coming in from anybody but Bernie. Uh -huh. Bernie was winning that thing in a, in a landslide. Right. And anybody who'd been through 1972 knew what happens when the Democratic Party goes that far left. And if you put a person like Bernie Sanders up there, it looked to me like a, a rerun of 1972. McGovern. McGovern. Okay. And I saw McGovern got beaten in almost every state. And I think, the, and I thought that was wrong for the Democrats to do that. I thought Bernie was probably, or Elizabeth was gonna win. Hmm. And uh, of course I didn't happy, I wasn't happy with either one of them. But what do you think why would, would I be happy so... with? Why would I be happy with people that are probably gonna lose? 
that's your opinion. I mean, that's what the, not what the polls were showing in terms of how he was performing in hypothetical match up, matchups against Trump, both in 2016 and in 2020. Well, that's but an you're, you're allowed that's to have a, that's that an opinion. argument. No, it's no, not you're an opinion. To have that opinion. Uh, but I mean, it didn't match up with the polling well, let me data. Just, but uh, let me, let let me, me tell you, though, the Democratic Party got together and they basically Jim Clyburn in South Carolina delivered a 70 percent victory for, for Biden. Right. Yes. That was enough to convince the others like uh, like uh, Mike Bloomberg and uh, and Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg to withdraw mm -hmm. because they saw, for whatever reason, they saw this heading and there's only one candidate that could win. Yeah. Now, but don't you think the media played a part of, in also convincing people like this is the guy that can win? Joe Biden is the one. If the media controlled thing, Mario Cuomo would be president. Uh, you don't uh, think you had General any Powell impact? Powell would be in. The media has had favorites forever. Right. General Powell, we've had a lot of favorites and they've gone nowhere. And well, you don't we think could it put it the other way. Okay. You, uh, you were at a network uh, and your show was beloved by many Democratic primary voters. You don't think you had any influence amongst those voters? It's it was pretty question. clear that I wasn't. I mean, yeah. I, I think the, the people, uh, I thought the people around me were probably with Bernie. I don't think there was an, an oh, animosity. That's uh, not, that's, it's not interesting. It's true. Yeah. You it thought the people around you were with like Bernie? Like at the network rep? Or do you mean the people who watched your show? I, I thought there was a um, an ambivalence about Bernie winning uh -huh. and a, a sense of this is fine. That's all. Okay. I, no more than that. I and, I said, and I was the one hard stricken that this is going to be a big defeat. Got it. And, uh, and, I, and I think you're wrong about thinking that uh, the middle class of the United States who, who run elections, basically, uh, we're not going to like Bernie. But why do you assert that so confidently? Call us, when, he, when you a, first of all, he called himself a socialist, yeah, but, which on. is not going to sell anywhere. I actually anywhere. agree with you that the label was No, no, it wasn't helpful, label. But, it was his name. It's what he said. Mm -hmm. But Chris, when you look at what he actually supported, things like health care for all, those are popular things. Right, yeah. living wage, fifteen dollar minimum wage. That's very popular. In fact, you know, the student debt cancellation is something that Biden has picked up and has moved forward. Bernie was with able too. to These put forward. But, uh, I thought they were very popular in Vermont, and I think he's very popular winning elections up there. And I don't think it would have sold with the country. Mm. I have a question about uh, about you specifically. Uh, so you've kind of lionized like bipartisan politics. You've written books about it, uh, Tipper and Reagan. I'm curious. Do you think then? You know, we're talking here about Trump and Bernie. Don't you think those are kind of indictments of the ty those type of politics, the bipartisan uh, kind of the lionization of that, of the lionization. policies? Lionization. Yeah. Did you read my book? Uh, no, I didn't read it. Okay, oh, so you're no, talking was, about what? Uh, well, I've seen the title of it. Oh, about, what, what, what are you talking about? Then? I'm talking about the neoliberal era. I'm talking about neoliberalism. What do you, where do you think that the populist energy around Bernie and Trump both came from? Like, what's the what? What is this in response to? And to me, it seems to respond. I, I think I think a lot of people uh, are not happy. Yeah. Generally speaking, they they, they don't. I think there's a lot of uh, of animus about about power, mm -hmm. about uh, intellectuals or. People running the show, and I think there's a lot of anger in, in working people about the Democratic Party. You think I it's think, justified? I think there's uh, anybody that looks down on other people is a, has a problem. It's creating a problem. And hmm. you you think there are elements, at least, of the Democratic Party that look down on people? What do you think? I I think so, but well, I'm think curious so your view. I think so too. Well, I guess um, it comes back to then: how do we get out of this? So we well, look, talking, if, yeah. if you get you know. You, if you want to get a really good socialist newspaper, I haven't read it, so let's find one, okay, because there isn't one. Uh -huh. uh, because that's what Bernie's pushing, big government role, a lot of government responsibility, a lot of government taking possum, taking roles, taking... I mean, Bernie at this point is basically a loyal soldier for Joe Biden. So yeah, the Bernie it. threat right. is completely neutralized to the extent that it ever existed. Would you say that's true? Well, you, you say things, and then I got to right. think about whether that's yeah. true or not. No, I mean, that's yeah, yeah, he's, we're uh, here. He's, we got he's, he's, he's neutralized. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think he's been, 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 he and Biden, I think, are on the phone a lot. Yeah. I yeah. think he supported Biden. I think he knew that Biden was the one that could win. And I think uh, he saw him winning the Democratic Party. And uh, I think the, um, um, maybe he has a sense of history. I don't know. I, I, Bernie went, ran in sort of wild liberal left-wing politics up in the Vermont and finally beat the Democratic Party. Yeah. He never joined the Democratic Party. Biden's head of the Democratic Party. Right. He has a different role. The Democrats are not socialists. They are, they're like Roosevelt. They believe in a little more government in places like uh, uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. 
But those issues have all been joined by Trump. Trump completely agrees with leaving Social yeah. Security alone. He's, he leaves Medicare, Medicaid alone. He is going completely against the Republican thinking about fiscal uh, austerity. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democrats have gotten in. I just read this piece about new, mm -hmm. new monetary policy. I think mm -hmm. it's wacky. Mm -hmm. They just spend all you want and print the money. Mm -hmm. print, it's in the paper today. I mean, Robert Zellick. Mm -hmm. Print all the money you want and just spend it. Biden and the student loan thing. Print the money, and I'll give it to you. I'm so just. Where'd the money come from? Where'd the money come from? Where did his, Where did the money come from? Well, I'm curious. What do you think? Market the, rates. What are the best? At rate, market what are the rates. best and worst things that Biden has done as president, in your view? He won. Uh huh. That was the best. See, that's, I mean, that's, 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 sarc it, that's sarcastic. Uh, no, that's a low bar. No, that's a cheat. That's fine. Uh, right. I, think, I think infrastructure was important. I think he should have done a bigger infrastructure bill. Okay. I think, uh, although it may, it, it may inflate the economy again, I think it, that next year could be very bad for the economy with inflation. And, uh, and that, hurts every, that hurts everybody. Yeah. You, you, you talk about spending sure. more money, and you have the goals for spending, but every time you spend, you're taking money uh, and inflating prices. It's just going to be, ha it is, you can talk all you want about getting rid of inflation. It's never going away as long as the money's being spent. So what about the worst? What are the worst things Biden did as president? You mentioned student loans. I think there's an old rule of Churchill's that you never promise something you can't deliver. Okay. Mm. Don't say you can give people freedom, uh, freedom from student loan debt. It's their debt. They paid them, they made the decision. Mm. They're getting their career opportunities out of it. The people in the middle, in the United States, the middle class and the working class in Pennsylvania who don't go to college, which is the majority of people, uh, they're not going to get those benefits. And yet you're taking them from them and saying, oh, I'm going to just inflate the economy. I'm just going to create more money, drive all the prices up to pay for student loans. Well, that was irresponsible because he couldn't do it constitutionally. He had no right to do that. Uh -huh. The courts are not going to back him on this. Yeah, I mean, they've already vacated and people's, uh, people's payments are going to be resuming very soon. Some commentators we've seen out there have been floating that we're on the verge of a civil war. You love history. No, let me do it. I'm going to go back to you because oh, this sure. argument yeah. about uh, you got to spend more money, mm. $2 trillion <clears throat> dollars over in full employment, we've pushed down unemployment as, as low as it's ever been able to do. This is the hardest we can ever do in mm -hmm. terms of expansionism and, 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 and social programming and everything that Biden's done. He's as, probably as left as you could go. Oh. Yes, that's I just, mildly disagree. I mean, no, the, the well, mildly story, disagree. The beginning, the beginning. You start of the with the premise that we live in a country we don't live in. The, no, no, no. <laughs> the, the beginning of the administration, there was significant programs and relief. There were checks that were cut. There were pandemic era programs. All of that has been stripped away over the course of the Biden administration. I mean, student debt payments are set to yeah, restart. Yeah, they were for the COVID. For the COVID unemployment super They were for COVID-19. Everything, everything that was done during that period was stripped away. So to talk, the story of the Biden administration has actually been cutting social spending over the course of administration, which is why I would argue he's in such a difficult place in terms of electorally, because people's experience have been, you know, I was doing okay and now, you know, all of these things that were helping me, including I think the child tax credit is a perfect example, those things have gone away. I do think inflation is an important part of that story. I just disagree with the uh, totality of the causes okay. of inflation. Right. But I think that that's the issue. But, you know, you, know question, you disagree that when prices go up, it's because money, more money is being spent. I, I don't think that's the whole thing that's going wait, on. Wait, that have, wait, that have, is what is that is economics. Even, but, but it's not that economics. Is economics. That's what the economics textbook says. But when we look then at you have the, some other the textbook? Federal Reserve, what, just, what, are, what are they learning this? Can you, can you let me finish here? The Federal Reserve did research showing that a significant portion, a majority of the inflation was just corporate price gouging. Executives were on calls. You don't have to take my word for it. Executives were on calls bragging about how they were able to use the excuse of inflation yeah. to hike up prices. Okay. So there's an issue with monopolies. Okay. The, the last thing I really want to get from you, and this is genuine. No, I, 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 I dare in the real world. And I'm telling you, if inflation rises next year and it, and it continues at the rate, it's going to hurt Biden like more. Oh, I believe, I, and, I, and, I absolutely we, agree we with that. Both agree no, with no that. disagreement yeah. there. Yeah. So, you know, the, the era that- But you can you spend more money and not, and not drive up inflation. The, the era that you've covered extensively, you know, it's like this Reagan, Clinton, neoliberal consensus. Um, do you think that that consensus failed in any meaningful respect? Do you think that consensus is broken? Are we moving towards a new era? Or do you think that it continues apace? Well, I don't think moderate uh, moderation sells. Generally, 
I mean, McGovern beat Muskie. I mean, it, it's, mm -hmm. it, the fact is that if you have a wild idea and you can appeal to people who are desperate, they're going to give you a shot. And uh, like, you know, the idea that we can continue a, a massive welfare program in addition to what we're spending now, I don't know how we can keep doing it. I mm -hmm. just, I mean, there's not going to, there's no way you're going to raise taxes. Um, I can't think of how you can raise taxes with a Republican Congress right now. And in, in effect, even the Senate's not going to do it. Right. Yeah, I mean. So where are you going to do it? What government are you going to have? You're talking about the United States government? But do you think that there were core failures? To get back to this question of like, <laughs> where does the populist energy around Trump and around Bernie, where does this come from? And is it rooted in some key failures of that bipartisan consensus, the overlap between basically Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan? You know, you have this Bill consensus in, and, 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 you have this consensus in favor of deregulation. You have the Iraq war. Free trade. You have yeah. free trade. You have all of these things that build up to the financial crash. I mean, aren't these key failures of neoliberalism that now you have these movements in reaction to movements that you, you know, very much don't support? Don't support what? You don't support the populist movements like Trump, like Trump Bernie. or Bernie. Yeah, yeah. Were there were there failures in that? Trump or Bernie? Were well, there? Okay, were there's there, a difference. No, they're wildly different. But talking about the animating energy here, were there key failures in that neoliberal consensus that has dominated here for some forty years? I don't know. You don't I know. I mean, I don't know. This is wearing me out. I just, I, this <laughs> argument is just. I'm arguing with someone who has no interest. I, I'm, not, in I'm not trying to argue. I really Tell me know. where the states no, are really that Bernie people win. No, no, no. Tell really me the want... states that are, Chris, are for your point of view, Chris. because you're ad, you're advocating here. You're, yeah, you're no, pretending no. to interview me, yeah. but you're really advocating for a social welfare state. And I'm well, going to ask you where 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 is it winning? Well, look at Florida. They pass a fifteen dollars minimum wage by sixty seven percent. You're jumping around. I'm not trying to argue with you about Bernie anymore. I'm no, trying to it's, ask it's, you what you really think about the era that you covered and whether it's coming to a close or whether you think that, you know, the close. do you think it's coming to a close? Do you think it served people well? Do you think there were any failures to it? Anything that should have been done differently hey, during let, that era? Can I speak? Yeah, of please. Course. Go ahead. I think the Democratic Party, uh, the modern Democratic Party, has been uh, very good at opposing the Vietnam War. And, um, and most of it, not at the top, is very good at opposing the Iraq War. And these are real conditions where people get killed. And we killed yeah. 200,000 people in Iraq. And in Vietnam, 58 million people, 58,000 people died from our country and millions of Vietnamese. And we made those decisions on civil rights, starting with the Brown case in 54 mm -hmm. and, the, 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 and the civil rights bill in 64 and the voting rights in 65. And all those issues, social issues, the Democratic Party, with Republican support in many cases, Midwestern Republicans were very big on civil rights. Uh, certainly, that's when we had a Northeastern Republican Party, mm -hmm. establishment party. And I think in all those issues, the, the, the Democrats did the right thing. And even, when, I think Roe v. Wade was a brilliant decision, because I think even though it was political and it wasn't really a court decision, it was a practical decision. Mm -hmm. the, the old joke was that the Supreme Court follows the elections, right. and they, and they yeah. did what makes sense, and viability made sense. I agree with that. Uh, and so we moved, we've made a lot of decisions. In terms of unemployment, uh, the Democratic Party has, under Clinton, uh, balanced the budgets, uh, which I think was important uh, under Harry Truman, balanced the budgets. Uh, I think they've tried to do uh, fiscally responsible stuff. Uh, they have uh, maintained at enormous a cost, Medicare, Medicare, and Social Security, which are incredibly difficult and expensive. They have done all those programs for retirees. Uh, I think they've... Uh, They've been probably in terms of homelessness and reality is on the street, not this the world you talk about. That world I don't know anything about. But in the reality of the streets, where you walk in San Francisco and you see the, the liberalism, and it is liberalism. It's not left wing, it's liberal attitudes towards people living in the streets, uh, the graffiti, the actually the deterioration of a lot of downtown San Francisco. I think they've been probably too liberal. Hmm. Um, and I think if you go any further in that direction, you're, it's, it's, it's almost zany. Now, just a minute. I'm getting to talk here because yeah. I live in the real world where people like uh, uh, Gavin Newsom can get elected and Jerry Brown can get elected four times. And uh, people that are moderate Democrats, or you call them uh, neoliberals, they are neoliberals because they're trying to do something. They're mm -hmm. not socialists. They don't believe in the government taking over things. They know that at some point the government gets too big and it's the problem. 
And they do it. They don't believe in all these solutions like you, you're advocating. But and you, and uh, thank God there is no Bernie trade, Sanders running the country. Thank think, God. No, it's just because you've made your point. I heard all the points. I've heard them all what? my life. And all those <laughs> arguments do you, do you think would, be defeat, would mean defeat. The real world Absolute defeat. That you're, you know, places the that real you're world, from, that The you real visited. world, I know about. I'm, 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 Did I had free two, trade, to, sir? The, let me the just say, I have a couple of brothers who voted for Trump this time. Yeah. Probably will again. I've got people and, 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 and I have relatives I will not even argue with because they disagree with me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more people on the other side than from your side. I think that Trump probably in the latest polling in Pennsylvania is one point ahead. Yep. In, uh, in uh, Michigan, he's even. Uh, Virginia, he's, he's running even. I think he's probably going to pick up a couple points in the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, because, of, because every time the courts go after Trump, every time the prosecutors go after Trump, every time they go after Trump, and they're all right in these cases— I believe completely right, his microphone gets bigger. Mm -hmm. It's louder because if you attack somebody, they have a right to respond. That's the key thing. When America is, if you're under attack, for whatever reason, you get to talk and you get a lot of opportunity. So he's going to have, I don't think he'll go to this, this uh, debate this week. I think he's probably going to wait outside. He may even get arrested during that time. He may do anything. But he's not going to let their let Chris Christie grab the front page of the New York Times away from him because right. all will be is Christie attack him, and he's the liberal pinup boy right now. You'll hear about him a lot on MSNBC and CNN. You'll hear a lot of him because he's the liberal pinup boy. He's their guy, and they know he doesn't have a chance in the world of beating Trump, right. just like Bernie Sanders does in the world of beating anybody, anybody. That's not what outside. the poll said, but we'll what, what agree poll? To give me the poll. There were all kinds no, of polls. No, give me one. Should. Just there give me one now in real you time. Can go no, back you're, not looking, you're not looking them up. You can go Tell back me the poll. No, give me one poll. Hillary. I'm look, just challenging okay. you on your Let basic ask, idea. Right, your ba you're, right, no, you have, this, you're, you're the you have the platform here. You have the platform. Hillary Clinton was the electable one. How did that go? How did she do a beating Trump? What is that? This is the, this is called whataboutism. No, this, no, this is making a, you're making a case about who would have won. I can tell you who didn't win. Hillary Clinton didn't win. Yeah. Yeah, and that was the person who at that time. Oh, well, Your network it's my, anointed my, I, I, as this was the, was this is the one who's Clinton. electable, okay. et I was pushing Hillary okay, Clinton. Okay. 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 I was <laughs> pushing Hillary Clinton as a candidate. I, I don't I'm going to be respectful. I like Sherrod Brown. I like people like that. Yeah. I like some people okay. on the left because they, because they have an ability to talk to people the way they live. Okay. And not this 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 well, performance. Sherrod and Bernie by, have some uh, labor supporting I, I don't. Look, you have a point of view, and you've run to this table, and, and I'm too. trying to defend against it. I'm yeah, just saying the more it's moderate right. course can win. Yeah. Yeah. The moderate course can win. And Biden uh, has made a lot of compromises with Ron Klain. He certainly moved over to the left. There's no doubt about it. Uh -huh. He got rid of the Hyde Amendment. He tried to. You're not going to get rid of it. But he, these kinds of decisions, uh, you know, he was for busing. Most people were for, uh, against right. busing, rather. And, and, and he's had to pay for all these sins of the past. I, I personally think it's 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 a strange argument. To Here's make. My I don't think you could win it as a ward leader anywhere. You know? My my last. I think I think I think you you you've you made that clear. Yeah, well, no, 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 I'm just saying. Where where would you where would you where would you want to be the board ward leader the political boss? Where can you be a good political boss? Well, I'm just now with your point of view. Oh, with my point of view. Yeah, where would you go with that? Where well, would you take I mean, that? I support populist economics. I no, think no, it's, where, it's no, no, where, no, 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 where, by the where, no, people. no. Tell me where you would win. I'm not, I'm not looking to be a ward leader anywhere, Chris Matthews. No, well, where are you going to win? Where are you going to win? I'm happy to be. Where are you going to right win with here. this argument? Well, obviously, it hasn't won in a Democratic primary, especially given the fact that you know I think Democratic voters are very concerned about electability, and I get that from a perspective. But my view is the media really shaped and informed those Democratic primary voters of who was actually electable uh, and who understand. wasn't, and that the evidence uh, that was an if opinion. I, if, if it that wasn't way, let me just say this: so if I had based. if I had wielded this kind of power in my role for 26 years, I would have felt it. I never felt it. Okay. I felt I was up against the left, and I had to argue with them. I felt I had to take, I had to challenge people like Hillary, Hillary included. I think the. Uh, the idea that, that Hillary was too conservative for the country is ridiculous. It's well, ridiculous. Well, there was a lot argument. going on with Hillary. The idea that yeah, but you was, talked about likability. No, no, Wasn't yeah, no, no. I, 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 not in that context. Yeah. Hillary's uh, very likable in person. Okay. How you, how, how you <laughs> but how do the American people feel about it? How they feel well, about it, how they react to her. Yeah, they yeah. obviously they went more vote for her than for him. Uh, but he won the Electoral College. Right. Yes. And how could that happen? In a world where Bernie rises supreme, well, we, we don't have to litigate Bernie. No, 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 no. But when you say Bernie, yeah. is, he is, tapped is what, what, into a similar populist anger and backlash against the forty-year neoliberal consensus that brought us 
wars and bad trade deals and hollowed down a good portion of the country. So I think there that's are, I, why I, I think, think there are ideologically would have been a absolutely, absolutely different. Him. Absolutely but different. Listen, it's a counterfactual. Yeah. We'll never know. No, I want no, to we do know. We know. Right? Ask Bernie, Bernie's but, foreign policy. Ask about the world. Yes, Chris, he sees it. Thank it's totally you. different. Than thank Trump. you for joining us. We really appreciate your time. We weren't trying to. We, we yeah. really. Want I to think. Hear what I think we've say. learned more about your point of view than mine. Oh, people know my point of view, but but it just it just doesn't it doesn't sync with anything. I've been involved in politics, and I can tell you that the Bernie argument. Um, he's a likable guy. I, I don't see the country outside of Nevada and those primary voters voting for him. Okay. Nevada is a working class state. I think no. you've made your position very clear, uh, and we appreciate your time, sir. Yeah, so thank, thank you for coming. We haven't talked about the world you. today, about democracy and the situation we face today, and I think that's been a problem, because that's the biggest thing I want to talk about. I thought oh, the lead no item, way. Yeah. I think that in terms of real, real world politics, the way we live, the way we elect people, mm -hmm. who, who gets votes. Um, I think that uh, it's a fact that starting with the age of television, which mm. we talked about, yeah, that people who lost presidential elections said so on television. What do you mean? They conceded defeat. They conceded. Oh, yes. They, yes. No, they conceded okay. defeat within, within real time. Even. Jack Kennedy and Nixon, because Nixon said, as, as the conditions go now, it looks like if, if it continues on this course, Kennedy will be the next president. Right. And then he issued a statement the next morning. Kennedy made a point of meeting with Nixon down in Florida so that it would be made very clear he lost. And uh, Al Gore had to do this, and Hillary Clinton had to do this. And they all did it, even though Hillary Clinton was very unhappy. She was sure. shocked by her defeat. And sure. I was in a hotel with her that morning. Uh -huh. And they all did it. They stood up. They had guts. And that, to me, is patriotic support of our country. It's not left wing or right wing. It's belief in how we, how we run our elections. And we do base them on who, who wins the electoral college and how it works. And that's how we do it. And all this other stuff about theories and what else could be done and how it could be a different world, it's not reality. It's not the world we live in. It's not our constitutional basis for our country. We live with a constitution with the most people voting, the way they vote, they may be middle class, they may have, they may like corporate names, they may even like M&Ms, they may like uh -huh. mm -hmm. Wheaties, they may, they, say, they don't hate mm -hmm. corporations. The American mm -hmm. people don't get up in the morning and say, I hate corporations, they don't. They worry about they, corporate they don't get they, they don't get up and worry about it. That's not what they think about it. They they're, worry they're, about much, they're, 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 they're not the on the left. They're not on the left. They're just not there. Yeah, but they worry. They're about, not on the left. They worry they're, about being able to pay the bills. Not just left, right. So people are pissed off that stuff costs too much at the yeah, stores. Yeah, that's right. You know. Of course, I've yeah. said that from the beginning. Yeah, we agree. No, we yeah. agree. It's all a question of like it's how it works. It's trying to make yeah. things into a big ideological snowball. It's not going to be. Bernie's never going to be elected to anything like president. No. It's not going well, to happen. That's very clear at this point. So he's not doing anything. Don't worry. He won that battle. You won that battle. It's not me. Uh, it's this thinking that's the McGovern thinking of it. All you have to do is hard left and everything's going to be fine. Democratic Party went hard left. They went nowhere. And it's one it's way to lose right. elections. I think it's about delivering Socialism. For people. We, I, I, about I don't delivering. want to live in a country so bad that I, it goes socialist. I think it's about that's delivering for people right. economically. It's, it's the, um, Chris, delivering. <clears throat> you, you go back to the same problem. It's holistic. Look at what driving up prices does to people when you do what you want to do. And you keep spending money at the government level. Federal government spending is what you're talking about. That's really what you're talking I'm about. I'm talking about delivering for people. No, no, no. Uh, yes, That's I another am, way of saying government no, spending. It doesn't have to mean that. Because it does. Everything okay. you said was all these, think about all these programs you talked about. Think about just health care. Okay? All the COVID how programs much, were spending programs and you support all of them. How much do we spend on health care as a country? More than any other country in the whole world. It's just a question of who is spending that money. Do you okay. think we're doing a good job with healthcare? Uh, the the nihilism is is very depressing. Of like this is just how it is, and we have to well, accept it. So um, I I personally I personally believe that politics is downstream of how people are doing in terms of their economics. Now you and I are just going to agree to disagree about how this all works out and exactly uh, the triggers of inflation. I, I think I think this Chris, argument is is fine in a I, Democratic primary, and we'll see who wins. That's all you can. We've do. already we've yeah, already seen it. Like I won. said, your yeah. side won. So yeah. Chris, no, I, I appreciate it, your time. It's not my side. My Chris, side is probably to it, the right it, of it, Biden. Okay. Uh, okay. Probably to the right. It's more moderate. I think that uh, people like Muskie and people like that over the years and John, you, like, John you said you like Sherrod Brown, who I would say is to the left of Biden. I, I want to thank you. You know for why? Coming. Because Sherrod Brown and Tim and Tim Ryan know how to talk to people. Yeah. On I their agree. face. And they don't come off that. as zany professors or anything like that. They're not starting to arguing theory. They're focused on populist pocketbook economics, and that's something I support. Pocketbook as well. is what pocketbook. Chris.
Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your insights. Sorry. Sorry. Keep, is keeping, you. keeping yeah. your eye on elections because they decide things and we're in a proper constitutional world. They are the victors. The, yes. the people, How the majority be. wins. We agree. How it should yeah. be. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.